Intermediate Algebra Review, Problem 11. This is a double or compound inequality, and you're going to isolate the variable in the middle section. So you look in the middle section to decide what to take off. First, anything added or subtracted, and you have to do it in all three sections. So you have to do it in here, on the other side of this inequality, and on the other side of this inequality. Then we'll clean up. Watch your signs here, like signs, so negative 18, less than or equal to 2x, less than different signs here, subtract, sign of the larger. Then go back into the middle and you're ready to divide. Division is where you have to watch out. If you divide by a negative, your symbols will flip over. But you don't need to divide by a negative here. Your coefficient is positive, so your symbols are not going to flip. You're going to divide by a 2 all the way across. This will give us a negative 9. It's less than or equal to x, which is less than a negative 9 halves. We are supposed to graph on a number line. So we show our endpoints, which are negative 9 and negative 9 halves. And it doesn't really matter where that goes. We do have them in numerical order there. Um, X is in between those, so we're going to shade the middle section. And for your endpoints, with the negative 9, you have an equals underneath. So that will be a bracket opening in the direction of your shading. For the other inequality symbol, there is not an equal. So it will be a parentheses in the direction of your shading. And then for interval notation, you take it directly from the number line. And so it is the interval from negative 9, use the bracket just like your graph, to negative 9 halves. And that one gets a parentheses. Then you are supposed to write in set builder notation. Set builder notation has your solution set symbols. Then it has your x and a straight line, which is, this is the set of all x such that, then you have your rule, which is your solution set where you solved. So we have negative 9, it's less than or equal to x, which is less than negative 9 halves. So this reads as the set of all x such that, and then you have your rule. Next we have an inequality with rational expressions. Uh, we need to clear the fractions just like we did with equations. So we'll pick the common denominator. Looks like a 4 will work. So we're going to multiply through by 4 on the numerators. You also have to remember to do every single term for this to be okay. So then we'll clean up. Our 2 will divide into 4 two times. You need to distribute that 2. So 2 times 2x will give us 4x. 2 times minus 5 will give us minus 10. 4 times 2 we will just multiply. And on this side the 4 will cancel. Right, and we can clean up a little bit on the left hand side. The negative 10 plus 8 will give us a negative 2. And this is a linear inequality. Um, it doesn't have the two symbols like the last one we did. And so we will just isolate the variable. For these, I like to keep my variable on the left just to make the graphing easier. So I'm going to choose to subtract 3x from both sides. It will cancel from this side. And it will give me just an x when I do that. So x minus 2 is greater than... 7, add your 2 to both sides, x is greater than 9, a number line graph, show your 9, uh, you're going to shade from 9 to infinity, uh, this will have a parentheses because there is no equals underneath. Interval notation, the leftmost point of the graph is 9, and it gets a parenthesis, just like your graph. 
goes forever to the right. That is to positive infinity. Infinity always gets a parentheses. All right, and to do set builder notation, we do our solution set symbols, the set of all x, such that, and then we put our rule, which is right here, x is greater than 9. Our next three problems work with uh, complex numbers, so we will simplify and write our answers in standard form. Uh, this one is subtracting complex numbers. You really work it and just treat the i like a variable as you go. So you're going to distribute your minus. I would always take time to do that. Uh, nothing changes on your first parentheses. There's nothing outside so you can take it off. For the second one this will give us a negative 3 and the two negatives will give us a positive 4i. And then combine just like you would like terms. So the 7 and the minus 3 will go together to give us 4. For our i terms, um, work with that coefficient. So 2 plus 4 will give us 6 and keep the i. In problem 14, we're multiplying two complex numbers. Um, it will work just like a FOIL problem. You have to remember when you do i times i will give us i squared. i squared is negative 1. So i is square root of negative 1 and i squared gives us just a negative 1. So back to a real number. So we'll do FOIL. So our first terms 3 times 2 is 6. Outside will give us 3 times negative 5i will give us negative 15i. Inside 7i times 2 will give us 14i. And last 7i times negative 5i will give us negative 35i squared. Remember your i squared is negative 1. So you have negative 35 times negative 1 gives us a positive 35. It can combine with the 6 to give you 41. And the i terms will combine to give you negative i. For a problem 15, we need to clean these radicals inside the parentheses up first. And so square root of negative 49, this has an i in it. It is square root of negative 1 times square root of 49. So here is our i, and 49 is a perfect square. So this is given us 7i. So we have 2 plus 7i. For the other one, um, that square root of negative 9. This is square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. So the neg square root of negative 1 is an i. 9 is a perfect square so it will give us 3. So 3i and so this one leaves us 1 minus 3i and then if you look what you're asked to do is just to add two complex numbers. You check outside the parentheses. There is nothing to distribute, so you can take the parentheses off. And then just combine. So we will combine the real numbers. 2 plus 1 is 3. And the imaginary numbers, 7i minus 3i gives us 4i. Problem 16 is a formula and we are going to solve for t. So we're going to isolate the t. Start on that side, so find your t. This p and r are multiplied by t, so you'll leave that till last. Take off this p. To make it cancel, you need to subtract it. So I'm going to do a minus p. When, here when you subtract, it's gone. You can write the step if you want. But it's going to cancel out. It is important on this left hand side that you write the new piece after. If you write P minus A it's not the same. Now on this side we're left with PRT. Go back and look at which one you want. You want the T. So work on this side with the T. The P and R are multiplied by T. You can get rid of them in one shot by division. 
just under the entire piece over here. And that isolates your T, that was your goal. It is fine to leave your answer like this. That is how I would leave it. Um, if you see them switch it in the book and break it and make two fractions, putting each piece of the numerator over the denominator and reducing, that is also okay. So that would be A over PR minus P over PR equals T. And your P's cancel. So this form, and this is an OR. That one is a correct solution. This form would be A over PR minus 1 over R equals T. You might see it written that way. 17 is a formula that has a fraction and a parentheses. Uh, get rid of the fraction first, just like you would on equations. So we need to multiply on both sides by this 2. So we're going to multiply by 2 on the left-hand side and 2 on the right-hand side. Then we'll clean up. So we have 2a equals h times b plus c. Anytime you have parentheses, you have to stop for just a minute and look and see if the variable you want is on the inside or the outside. If it's inside, you will distribute. If it's outside, do not distribute. All right, so we want b. b is on the inside, so we do need to distribute to get it out of the parentheses. So 2a equals hb plus hc. Now we want to get to the b term. So go on the side with the b term. Take off anything added or subtracted first. So you're going to subtract this hc from both sides. You need to put it after on the other side. When you subtract it on this side, it's gone. Now look back and you're trying to get to the b. So you need to get rid of this h. It's multiplied. So we will divide. I would just do it under the whole piece. That isolates our b. So 2a minus hc over h equals b. That's the form I like, but there is also an alternate form if you split this up and make two fractions. So the other form would be 2a over h minus, and this when you um, break it apart, it would be hc over h. The h would cancel, so it would just actually be minus c equals b.